So I'm going to draw a basic line. I'm going to make a note of where I draw it. The start point's 10, 10. I'm going to put the angle. Let's put a length of uh, 7.5. Angle 33.3333. So the reason I'm doing that is because I want this line to have properties that are easily identifiable once we do the, the next step here. So I'm going to use a function called int get. Along with the entity selection function. Okay, so what that have, has outputted is just a, what's called an entity list. I'm going to pull my com command line up here. So all this is is a list of the various properties of, of our line. This list contains DXF codes. So we can see the name of the object is a line. There's lots of DXF codes you're not going to have to worry too much about at this point. So we have uh, DXF code 8, which is the layer. 10, which is the start point, which I thought I did at 10, 10, but uh, evidently I, I didn't. But let's look at that. I'll change my units just to make this easier as well. Let's change it to a decimal. There we go. Precision. Yeah. So I'll just highlight the line. We'll look at the properties. So we see start X, start Y. Make a note of those numbers. You can see down here, this DXF code 10, the start X and the start Y are the same as the line's properties. DXF code 11 is the line's endpoint. So basically this is just an entity list and Regular, regular lisp to uh, modify this object, we're gonna we go into this unless we're using the command function or something. But um, this this is the way you do it normally if you actually want to do it properly and programmatically rather than scripting. This is straight where you go. So, anyways, I'm gonna go into the visual lisp editor and we're gonna start messing around with the line we just created. So I've already selected my line. But actually, let's uh. Let's run this because I've outputted the DXF code list, but I haven't created a variable for my line object. So let's do that right now. Now let's make the entity list a variable. So remember when you're working with auto list, you have to store your information as a variable because I, I can get the entities, I can display them. That doesn't mean I stored it unless I use the set Q function, of course. So this is something we'll use later just because I'm actually going to turn this into, into a proper code. So anyways, in this lesson, what we're going to do is something called a routine I call a lengthen by center. I don't think that comes with a AutoCAD out of the box. Even if it did, sometimes programming an AutoCAD command that already exists can be a good exercise as well if you do want to learn this code. Okay, so next up, we have our entity list and our line object stored as variables. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to change the layer of the object using that DXF code entity list. So I'm going to copy and paste that. So that creates 8 and then a layer name a-anode-light. So these are called dotted pairs, right? So if I use the cons function and I put an 8 there and the layer name here, note that it automatically includes a little dot right here. And it only does that if the DXF code entry itself is a dotted pair. Because if we go to the the start and end points, DXF codes 10 and 11, you notice they're not dotted pairs. They're actually um, just lists that start with 11 and then the three point coordinates. The 0.0, .0 being the Z, or um, how would I describe that? The, if, that was a, if it was a 3D point, this would be something else. But since we're working in 2D, we only have two entries that are not, um, that are not zero. Anyways, enough on that. 
Okay, so we constructed a pair. So I'm just going to show you that again. Cons, let's say we make a point 120, 0, 0.0. So if I use the cons function to make a too many arguments, what's going on there? Oh, I know what I got to do here. Cons 10 list. So now I've made a, well, that was kind of confusing. Let's do that again. So when we use the cons function, it does some work for us. It, it makes a dotted pair for us when we need it to. It makes a the point entry correctly without the dot when we need it to. So that's easy enough, right? So anyways, this next uh, this next row here, or the I'm using the substitute function. So this will substitute this where this occurs in my entity list. So if you can see what we're doing right now, the entity list for the object we have, let's see if we can find that layer. The entry eight is a dash anal. So what I'm going to do here, I copy that, paste that down here. And now it says a dash anal dash light. So we've just changed the entity list. But remember that this is simply an output. It's not storing this as a variable. So I'll just show you this right here. Let's just get rid of this. So when we update the entity list, always remember to make a new variable of the entity list or just overwrite your existing variable. So now if I run this line of code, I'm actually not only outputting the changed entity list, I'm applying it to our variable. And now the final step in changing that entity, and I'm gonna copy this, I'm going to go here and I'm going to put that here. You got to do ent mod my entity list. That'll update the drawings database to reflect the changes we made to that entity list. There we go. So we just changed the layer of it. So let's go back to our view line. So that's pretty simple. It's It can be a lot of work. And if you're wondering uh, why use visual lisp or basic lisp, that's a very hard question to answer, but in truth, there are certain situations where the basic Lisp is better. There are certain situations where the visual Lisp is better. And then there are situations where either, either side of the programming language, certain elements, objects, methods are only available through either the visual Lisp or the regular Lisp. So to actually get into it, that would be a whole nother video. But anyways, I'm going to go... Uh, Go ahead now and show you how to do exactly what we just did, but using visual list functions. So we have our line object, right? But before we start performing visual list functions on it, we have to make sure that it's a, something called a VLA object. Because right now it's just an auto list entity. And if we start doing, um, I'll show you right now. So it's not a VLA object, it's just a, an ename, it's just an entity that, that means, an auto list entity. Anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to run this line of code. So we just converted our variable, our object, to a VLA object. Now when we go to VLAX dump object, and this is important here because um, in object-oriented programming, you have properties and methods. I'll get to methods shortly. But all that does is for the given object, it outputs all the property values. So notice some of these say read-only, like the angle of the line. Another is length, which is read-only. There's an endpoint. Here's that this is uh, alphabetical because the start point's way down here, right? So we have all the all these variables, right? 
we have the layer, of course. So, you know, if you had a text object and you dump the text object, you'd have the, the text string listed in here somewhere. You'd have other, other variables, the font type, the style, the text style. So each object class is going to have different properties, right? So anyways, let's, let's change the layer of that object using Visual Lisp now. So I'm going to go back here. So not much to it. So as you can see, the code looks quite a bit different compared to this, right? And in this case, in my opinion, it would be simpler to change the layer of an object using Visual Lisp. So anyways, now let's get to uh, let's get to the methods. So that VLAX dump object, if you add the optional true argument to it, it's going to output the methods as well in addition to the properties. So let's copy that line of code, place it down here. So we have all our properties, of course, you know, the start point, all that. And now we have these methods. Offset, rotate. And different objects are going to have different methods, of course. So for myself, I can't think of a really good example of that right now, but there's certain things you can do to a text object that you can't do to a line. Properties are much easier to explain because obviously a line is not going to have a text string, right? But for properties, different things have different properties. And once we get further into the lesson, these, these methods, <clears throat> sorry, these methods will make a lot more sense. So anyways, let's, uh, let's do the VLA offset command. Remember, I, I know this co command exists. One hint is that if you scroll down here, you'll see offset listed right here. So anyways, let's put that in. Let's see what happened. So it just made a new line for us. So let's say you're running a code and you want to do all these uh, visual list functions to your, your object. But then later in the code, you want to switch back and start doing regular autolist functions to your object. You actually got to run a run a code that does the opposite of this right here. So it turn this code right here, this little function, this turns it back into an autolist entity. So let's run that code now. And remember, you always have to use the set queue. You ha have to actually update your object, not just uh, not just run the command and, and return a value that's not stored. You actually have to store the value. The easiest way to do that is just overwrite your variable, unless you're going to uh, go forward with a new variable for some reason, of course. So anyways, um, we just did that offset method. And now, of course, you can do that in regular, um, regular Lisp as well. You could use the command. If we run this line, this works, but um, and it would need some modification to work, but it gets kind of erratic, kind of tricky, right? Let's see, let's, let's just put a none right there just so it behaves slightly less erratically. But if I run this line of code, this will offset our line as well. So that, that works, but let's go up. Anyway, so that did offset it, as you can see. But anyways, that's kind of... Um, using the, the command function is not always the best way to do this. So there's better ways to do that, including including end make. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cap this, uh, this video off, and I'm going to continue it on in the next video. I'm going to try to keep these videos to 10 minutes, and I'm already at 15 minutes. 